the problem can get trickier. So let's look at this problem we have down here at the bottom. This is again equilibrium reactions using ice tables to help us solve the problems. So here we go. Starting with 0.1 mole each of carbon monoxide and water vapor in a 5 liter flask, equilibrium is established that produces carbon dioxide and hydrogen. If the equilibrium constant, Kc, is 23.2 at this temperature, what are the equilibrium concentrations of each species? In this problem, we're given the equilibrium constant. In the last problem, that's what we were trying to find. In this problem, we're given the equilibrium constant, and we're trying to find the equilibrium concentrations of everybody. So we're trying to find the last row in the ice table. To set this problem up, this is a chemical reaction. We need to write the reaction. And yes, I still expect you to know how to do this. I have carbon monoxide and water vapor. I'm going to assume everybody's a gas, so I'm not going to write that part in this reaction just to save space. So CO plus H2O, equilibrium with. They're telling us that this produces carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So CO2 plus H2. You want to make sure that it's balanced. Right number of carbons, oxygens, and hydrogens on both sides. And it looks like it is. Two, two oxygens, two hydrogens, one carbon. All right, the next thing that might be very useful to do as you're approaching these problems is to write your equilibrium constant expression. We know the numerical value is 23.2, but we're going to need the formula for it. Um, this is a good way to keep from making silly mistakes as you are working through this problem. We want to keep this formula in mind. And again, we know that the numerical value is 23.2. We'll keep that in mind as well. Uh, remember, if there are any stoichiometric coefficients to balance the reaction, you do need them in your equilibrium constant expression. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we notice that we're given moles, not molarity, and it's a 5 liter flask. So we're actually going to have to calculate the molarities. For our ice table, when you're working an equilibrium problem, it is more convenient to put your ice table in molarity rather than moles. So we're going to go ahead and enter everything in molarity for our ice table, but we're going to have to calculate it. So remember that molarity is moles per liter. Keeping our three sig figs, our molarity then is 0.1 divided by 5 or 0 0.0200. Um, this is of each of carbon monoxide and water vapor. In my ice table, I am not going to worry too much about writing on my sig figs. It just clutters it up. Um, do keep in mind, though, by the end of this, that you do have three sig figs, 0 0.0200 molarity for each of your molarities. So there are my initial amounts of CO and H2O. The initial amount of CO2 and H2 is zero. Otherwise, they would have told me. The assumption is, is that the amount of product is zero unless you're told otherwise. Now, we're not given any other information as to what goes in the equilibrium table. We do know that at equilibrium, this equilibrium constant expression holds true. But our task is to find out what is this at equilibrium. These are our unknowns. And in algebra or math or when you're solving an equation and you've got an unknown, often you use an x. So we're going to use x's for our unknowns in our ice table. And this is how that works. Some of my CO and H2O will be consumed as the reaction proceeds. So I will lose x of my CO. And since the stoichiometry is 1 to 1, I will also lose x of my water. Since the stoichiometry is 1 to 1 for CO2 as well, I will gain XCO2 and I will gain XH2. There is the stoichiometry. Remember that the change row involves the stoichiometry of the reaction. I don't have actual numbers to put there, so I will put X's. And now I can put my equilibrium values for these in terms of X. Both CO and H2O begin with 0.02 molarity, and I lose X moles per liter. And so my um, equilibrium amount of CO and H2O is 0 0.02 minus X. My equilibrium amount of CO2 and H2, each of those are just X, 0 plus X. And now I'm ready to plug in to my equilibrium constant expression and mathematically solve for X. 
Let me get a little space so we can do that. All right, so let's set up our mathematical expression down here. We have that our k, I'm, I'm looking at this while I write it, 23.2 is equal to CO and H2 are both x, so I end up with an x squared on top and a point zero two minus x times point zero two minus x and I'm going to write that as point zero two minus x squared. And so because each of these are the same, because each of these are the same, I have those squared values. Now this is a quadratic equation which can be solved but it does quite require quite a bit of algebra but often what we find is there are shortcuts, not shortcuts, there are ways to reduce these so that you don't have to perform the quadratic equation. And in this case, because I do have a perfect square on the right hand side, one way to reduce this is to take the square root of both sides. So I would have the square root of 23.2 and I could go ahead and plug that into my calculator now and get a number for it, but the square root of 23.2 is equal to x all over 0 0.02 minus x. The square root of the right hand side is just means that we get rid of all the squares. Now I need a little bit more algebra. Here's where your algebra skills are required. I need to multiply through by 0 0.02 minus x on both sides and I might, it looks something like this. I like keeping this numerical value in the square root just because I don't like carrying along a bunch of extra numbers, but that's just me. I'm going to write this and then I'm going to distribute. And then I'm going to collect all of my x's on one side. I have this term as an x and this term as an x. And I'm going to try to squeeze it in. On the left hand side I have, and on the right hand side I have x plus the square root of 23.2 x. Let me collect my x's. I think you can read that. And of course you remember all of this algebra. And now finally to solve for x, I'll divide both sides by 1 plus the square root of 23.2. And so I end up with this expression. Now if you were punching these numbers into your calculator as you went along, you have some other numbers here, but we all should get the same answer. I like waiting until the end just because I like to plug it into my calculator only once. But again, that's just me. So now let's punch it in and see what our value for x is. All right, I'm getting a numerical value of 0 0.1656. I've got one extra sig fig. It looks like I should only have three. And I'm keeping an extra sig fig because this is not my final answer. I've taken the question away, but you may recall that the question was, what are the equilibrium concentrations of everybody? And so now I need to know what numerical values go here for the equilibrium and for CO2 and H2 it is just this value to the correct number of sig figs, 0 0.0166 molarity and for H2 0 0.0166 molarity. But for CO and H2O it's this value subtracted from 0.0200. And so for these two, my answer is, all right, since I subtracted 0 .0200 had four, four decimal places, um, this number I'm subtracting actually has five decimal places, so I'm going to round my answer to four decimal places. So with the correct sig figs, these are the equilibrium concentrations of CO and H2O by plugging my x value into this calculation. And it's always a great idea when you are finished with a problem like this to go back and double check and confirm your value for your equilibrium constant. You may get a slightly different value in the last sig fig depending on your rounding. Um, if I use these rounded values and I come up with something very, very close to 23.2, um, then I know that I've probably done the problem correctly. So it's always a good idea to check and right now you should go back and double check that your equilibrium constant with these equilibrium values is indeed 23.2.